Yo, what's up? Hope you're having a great day so far. In today's video, it's gonna be slightly different than usual because today I'll be reviewing, and excuse me if I pronounce this incorrectly, we'll be reviewing the Back On 969 Soldering Iron Kit. Now this video is not sponsored in any way. I really just needed a soldering iron and I scrolled through the vast depths of Amazon and found, well, I found one that was 50% off. And so I just went ahead and bought it because I felt like I was getting a really good deal. We're gonna find out today if I was right in thinking that. But yeah, if you like what you see today and you're looking for a good soldering iron for beginner electronics, uh, this one might be good. I don't really know yet because I haven't opened it. I just got it in last night. But yeah, so that's gonna be the video for today. If you enjoy it, Subscribing is a great way to support the channel and comment down below if you already have a soldering iron Maybe recommend other ones in case people are looking for some don't be that person who gatekeeps your soldering iron. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna say today. Let's go ahead and get right into the video Okay, so I just opened the box and now let's see what comes in the kit. Okay. So right here, oh my. Okay, and here it is, the Bakken 969 soldering station. So taking a look in the box, we can see what we have. So right here seems to be the hub with the soldering iron. Here is the iron stand along with the copper wire ball, it seems, and a cleaning sponge in the back. I did see, I think, in a tutorial video on Amazon that you were supposed to put this in water first, which, I mean, obviously, this is super flat. And then looking here, I think, yes, right here, five tips for the soldering iron. Uh, we can go over those later in the video. It also comes with some solder, perfect. I'm not sure how good the solder is, uh, but we're gonna see again later in the video and then right here last thing it seems is a solder sucker Okay, so for the station, let's take this plastic wrap off and see what we're dealing with it Seems that there's already what I think is called a chisel tip on the iron So we'll leave that on for now on the station The temperature range has a range from 200 to 480 degrees Fahrenheit or for Celsius It's 392 to 896 is what it seems to be. Let's go ahead and get this plugged in. Okay, now that it's plugged in, I'm pretty sure the power button is, oh, okay, it's right here on the side. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Uh, you can see that the indicator light has just turned on right there. So I actually just recorded myself getting all of this out and the recording sadly did not work. I seem to have some tape in my finger. I turned it up to 200 degrees Celsius as the manual had requested so I can begin tinning. And in case you're wondering what this was right here, I took apart my controller for the Pac-Man game from my previous semester at college because there was a few things I never got to solder. Let's see if it focuses, yep. A few bad solders that I'm gonna hopefully be able to fix and then I need to solder my slider potentiometer as well. Okay, so looking at the types of tips that are in this pack and the first one that is already in the gun earlier i called it a chisel tip i was wrong i did a little more research on what they were called just to make sure i was getting them right this one is actually a knife tip i can re-show this that is a knife tip doesn't really focus well there we go that is the knife tip there's a second knife tip right here in the middle and then going from your left to your right right here is a dull conical tip and then there is a dull chisel tip or wait that might be, I think, what is called a bevel tip. And like I said, the second knife tip. And then right here is a chisel tip. And then right here is another conical tip. And this one's a little more precise than the one on the far left. Also, earlier I made another mistake and I forgot to show that in the box also included these tweezers. But when I first opened the box, I dropped a few items out of it. And yeah, so these are the tweezers that come with it. Okay, hopefully the iron is heated up by now. Okay, perfect. So I got it tinning right now. And now we can use, again, the copper ball. And then I'll use this cleaning sponge a bit. It is still a little moist. I will say the cleaning sponge, I'm not sure how delicate they're supposed to feel, uh, but based on like other sponges I've used, it does feel slightly more delicate. I'll see in the future if that is an issue, but as of right now, it's not an issue at all. And now that I have this knife tip already, I'm actually going to use this to desolder my previous solders on these wires, because as I said, they're not very good. Let's see how well the solder reacts to the temperature. Sadly, I have no flux. So hopefully it's not just dried out. Okay, perfect. I actually just got one wire off. That was pretty quick too. I am going to use the copper ball and clean off the tip because a little bit crusty. I'm also going to tin it once more. Let me get a little bit of the solder off. There we go. 
Uh, I don't know the longevity of this tip. I guess we'll see in later videos. Oh, button just flew off. That took about a minute though, I would say. And that is kind of a while. It could again be because I have no flux. Let me go ahead and 10 once more. Cause now I'm about to turn off the solder iron and go ahead and switch tips to test out one of the conical tips. Uh, okay, it should be good. I'm gonna let it cool off and then we should be good. So I just went ahead and took the potentiometer right off of 3D print because again, I don't wanna melt any 3D prints while I'm, I just need to solder three wires on and then that really should be all for today. Sadly, I have no proto boards or any boards that I need to solder yet, but not to worry because in a video coming soon, hopefully in a month or so, I'll be doing just that and I'll be doing a lot more soldering as I'm working on a small project. And I changed my mind, I'm gonna go ahead and use this chisel tip as I think it would be a little bit easier for the job that I'm trying to do right now. Okay, I think by now the solder has cooled down, so I'm going to change the tip, and it seems to be pretty simple to do that. I think I just turn right here, that is tight, I'm turning the wrong direction. I seem to just turn right here. Okay, so the little frame came off, so now I should be able to just, there we go, pull off the knife tip that came on the solder iron, I'm gonna set it aside over here. So now I can put on the chisel tip that I wanted to use, let me go ahead and just slide it on right there, and then I'm putting the frame right back over it, tightening it down. And yeah, there we go, I have my chisel tip on, and that was pretty easy. So now I'm gonna turn the temperature back up. I'm gonna put it around 250, so I can just go ahead and tin it before I turn the temperature a little bit higher. And then I'll be able to do the last little bit of soldering that I wanna do in this video, so yeah. Okay, so I think the iron is ready to tin. So let's go ahead and get the solder out. And let's see, and let's see what it looks like. Okay, perfect. Get a bunch of, okay, perfect, it's working good. Let me get a bunch of solder on there. Okay, let me clean it off and turn the temperature up a little bit more. Okay, so I think the iron is hot enough to go ahead and solder. So let me go ahead and tin the little rods on the potentiometer. Now that I have the potentiometer tinned and ready for soldering, I went ahead and grabbed some wires. These are DuPont wires. Uh, but honestly, I just want to get rid of them because they're kind of cheap DuPont wires that I got a long time ago And I don't really have a good way of organizing them. So I don't mind using these Okay I'm also tinning the wire a little bit making it a little bit easier to solder onto the potentiometer and now that I have them both tinned I'm going to go ahead Okay, that was really easy actually and I really like how well the chisel tip uh, Worked for this. So let me add a little bit more solder I'm not very good at soldering wires to wires. That's something I do need to work on. Uh, let's go ahead and clean the tip off and go to the next. Okay, I just realized I actually soldered ground onto the wrong side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and desolder this. Okay, the ground wire is connected though. I don't like, there we go. Now I like the connection, if you can see it. And now I'm gonna switch over to connecting the orange wire. Let me just go ahead and tin it a little bit. I actually forgot that I have these tweezers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use these because I think it'd be much easier. Okay, I have the connection. Now I'm just gonna add more solder and make this a little stronger. Okay, more solder has been added. I'm happy with that connection as well. Now moving on to the power wire, let me go ahead and tin. Okay, now that they are both tinned, I should just be able to connect and then add some more solder. Okay, connection was nice and quick. Now let me just add a tad more solder and I should be good. This one I can be a little more generous because there's no exposed pins near it. Okay, the connection should be good, yep. It is good if it focuses there I mean you can kind of see it uh, so the connection should all be good on this potentiometer I will say I really like the solder iron I feel like it did its job I feel like I didn't do mine I'm not amazing at soldering it's a lot better than I thought it would be as I paid very little money on Amazon for it cool I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera back to where it was so I can go ahead and finish up this video okay so going over the back on 969 soldering kit I must say, as someone who isn't great at soldering, it's hard to find anything about this kit I don't really like. I think the only downside is there's no flux. That's something I would have loved to have just so I don't have to buy it separately. But that isn't an issue with the soldering iron or the actual solder or any of the tips. Overall, like I'm happy with what is sitting on my desk right now. Again, I'm just a beginner solderer. I probably learned about eight months ago and I'm really not that good at it. But I look forward to what I can learn by using this beginner's kit. But for everyday use, I could see this being a great purchase. And I know I didn't do too much soldering today, so maybe I'm completely wrong and I'm gonna come back a week from now when I'm working on a project and I realize that it's not very good. But if that's the case, I will let everyone know when the time comes.
But yeah, if you're interested in getting a soldering kit, I will say I'm, I'm happy with this one and I'm sure you will be too. Of course, do your own research just in case. I'm not a trusted advisor when it comes to soldering because I am a beginner. But yeah, that's going to be all for today. If there's any other reviews you do want to see with maybe equipment that I'm going to purchase, make sure you comment down below so I can know. And also make sure you comment down below if there's things that I could do better in these videos because this is my first time doing a video like this one and I know there's so much room for improvement. So please let me know down in the comments and I will do my very best to change that next time I make a video like this one. But if you did enjoy, subscribing is a great way to support the channel. I'm already at 250, a little over 250 subscribers, which is crazy because I never would have thought I would have reached 250 as quickly as I have. But as I alluded to earlier in the video, I will be working on a super secret project that I will be posting hopefully in a month or so. I'm really just waiting for all the stuff to come in so I can start working on it and start recording the video, but I'm super excited for what's to come next. And if you were to, again, you could subscribe and make sure you do not miss it. Anyways, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and as always, stay curious.